All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this example here. You guys want to go ahead and find the solution of the equation. And we do have an x plus a 1 over x minus a 3 equals a negative. x squared minus a 6, x plus 1 over an x minus a 3 times x minus a 1. Now, in this case, guys, um, I could have actually already solved this with you. Um, I am going to be showing a different method on this here. Um, previous method we had done in this case is where we were actually doing cross multiplication. We multiply top with bottom, bottom with top of opposite fractions. Um, in this case, I do want to go ahead and focus on, where am I? I want to go ahead and focus on, um, multiplying by its common denominator. I actually want to go ahead and focus on the denominator here. Notice in this case, guys, both fractions do have uh, a denominator in this case, and they're actually more or less the same, right? They both, in this case, share the x minus the 3 and the x minus the 3. So um, what we're going to go ahead and do in this case is we're going to go ahead and multiply by um, the greatest common denominator. If you guys recall, greatest common denominator is... Um, Whenever we're focusing with fractions here, um, if you're adding them or subtracting them, you have to get a greatest common denominator. In this case, for us, it would be the expression of x minus 3 times x minus 1. So I'm actually going to go ahead and multiply both sides by that. I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by that. Multiply it here by that. And also multiply it on this side. Now, the reason for us to do this is to actually eliminate the fraction, because whenever we're working with fraction, I mean, nobody likes to work with fractions here. So if I multiply, um, for example, on the right-hand side, it's actually going to cancel out x minus a 3 and x minus a 1 cancels out. On the left-hand side, it should only be canceling one of them out, which is x minus a 3. So I should have x minus a 1 times x plus a 1 equal to a negative notice in this case case we still have that negative x squared minus a 6x plus 1. notice how i did put this in parentheses once again notice how i put it in parentheses because the negative should be ex affecting the whole expression here um, so once again we multiplied by the common denominator here we cancel some things out and we no longer have fractions so let's actually multiply this out. I'm going to go ahead and use distribution there. So starting off with the first one, if I multiply x times x, that's uh, x squared. And then if I multiply x times a 1, that's x. Moving on to the next one, I have a negative 1 times x, that's negative x. And then negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And all of that is going to be equal to uh, us distributing that negative sign into the parentheses so that should give us a negative x squared plus 6x minus 1 all right let's go ahead and combine like terms guys on the left hand side i actually could combine these two and they actually cancel because x minus an x is zero so i should have x squared minus a 1 equals a negative x plus 6x minus 1 now, in this case, guys, uh, we want to go ahead and actually solve for x. So we do have to make the equation equal to 0 and see what we can do with that. Um, I am going to be moving this to the opposite side just because I want to have a positive leading coefficient. So I'll move all of this to the side. So let's go ahead and add an x squared. And I'm going to go ahead and do it all together. Add a 6x. And... Let me just move this. <coughs> and uh, add a 1. All right. So this cancels everything on this side. And I have x squared plus x squared. That's actually a 2x squared. And then I really can't combine anything with the 6x. So that's just plus 6x. And then neg negative 1 plus a 1 is 0. So then that equation is equal to 0. So we have this here, right? I move it everything to one side. Um, give me a 2x squared plus a 6x equals 0. Now, first off in this case, guys, because our highest exponent is a 2, 
um, we could try doing a factor and using the diamond method, but in this case, we can't do the diamond method here because we don't have a constant. We actually only have the leading coefficient and the x coefficient. So the method we're going to go ahead and do here is GCF. We're going to go ahead and factor using the GCF. And in this case, the biggest number that divides into 2 and 6 is 2, and they both have an x. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out a 2x. So let's factor out a 2x. Open parentheses. Factor out a 2x from a 2x squared, I have an x left. And I factor out a 2x from a 6x, I have a 3. From there, um, let's go ahead and actually solve for this. So if I do 2x equals 0 and then x plus 3 equals 0, then we can solve for x. On this one, I would actually be dividing by a 2 on both sides. So x in this case is going to equal 0. On the other one, I will be subtracting a 3. So then x in this case is going to equal a negative 3. Now, before we say these are my solutions, because these could be, we have to do a check. Now, whenever we're working with fractions here, guys, whenever we're working with fractions, um, if we get a zero in the denominator in this case, it's actually going to give us a no solution. So let me actually just write down the original equation once again. I have x plus 1 over x minus a 3 equals uh, x squared minus a 6x plus 1, so I have a negative in front, and then x minus a 3 times x minus 1. So if we do a check in this case, guys, those are actually the values of x, where x in this case is, <coughs> oh, I just saw something, guys. I just noticed I did a mistake. No way. We did a mistake here, guys. I did one. We're supposed to subtract instead of add. So then this here, if we take a backtrack, guys, this should be minus. That was my mistake there. Oh, my God, I didn't catch it. That's a negative. So then that makes this here a negative, and that makes the inside also a negative, which makes our solution positive. So that's a negative, so we're going to add So then that becomes a positive. Oh, my God. Makes sense now. <laughs> All right. So I did a mistake there, guys, early on. <clears throat> I That was supposed to be negative all this time instead of a positive, which gives us a positive solution. So this goes back, back to the equation here. I have values that say x is equal to a 0 and x is equal to a 3. And I did mention that because this is a fraction, we can't have a zero in the denominator. Let's say the top, I don't know, is a one. It can't, that's actually undefined, undefined. If you have a zero in the denominator, it's going to create an undefined solution. So before we consider these to be our answers, we have to check. If I input this in the equation, is it going to make it a zero? Or if I input this one into the equation, is it going to make my denominator go to zero? That's the focus, guys. Is it going to make the denominator go to zero? No it doesn't matter. The denominator is the one that matters. So if I input in a zero, for example, on this one, we have zero minus a three. That gives me a negative three. So that one's good. If I try this one, it's zero minus a three times <coughs> um, zero minus a one, which gives us a negative three times a negative one. Which gives us a positive 3. So in this case, that works. So in this case, one of the solutions is this one. Because I'm not getting a 0 in the denominator. Now let's go ahead and check the other one. If I do a 3, 3 minus a 3, that's actually giving me a 0. Which is something we can't do because it's going to give us an undefined solution. So it's not working for this one. Then it's most likely not going to work for the other one. Because if I do 3 minus a 3 times 3 minus a 1, <coughs> 3 minus a 3 is a 0, and then zero, um, 3 minus a 1 is a 2, that's still going to give me a 0. So that can't happen. We can't have that. So in this case, out of these two solutions, this one's not it because it's going to give me an undefined solution. So my only solution in this case, my only solution here, would be for when x is 0. 
So that's the only solution. So once you get your answer, which is here, you still have to check which one's going to make the equation a zero. Which one's going to make it a zero in the denominator? So this is specifically in the denominator. And we'll go ahead and see a few more examples. See a few more examples here. 